Roger that. Copy. There uh, seems to be some sort of artifact here. As wayward children of the internet generation are well aware of the contemporary cultural landscape of cats and pianos. There's a whole genre of YouTube videos where cats play pianos, and one such performance by the cat Nora was later turned into a full orchestration for chamber orchestra in a sort of cat certo. 18th century composer Domenico Scarlatti drew similar inspiration from his cat walking across his keyboard when he wrote his cat fugue. But there is a more sinister connection between cat and keyboard that goes back almost a half a millennium. I'm talking, of course, about the most diabolical of instruments, the cat piano. Although the concept existed earlier, the term Katzen Clavier was coined by Athanasius Kircher, the great eccentric 17th century German Jesuit priest. Sometimes called the last Renaissance man, Kircher was a true polymath and wrote treatises on subjects ranging from Egyptology to medicine to biology to magnetism to music and acoustics. His 1650 tome, Musurgia Universalis, explored unusual and arcane subjects in music theory, such as transcriptions of bird song, strange Rube Goldberg-esque automated pipe organs, something called donkey choirs, and then this thing, the cat piano. He explains, in order to raise the spirits of an Italian prince burdened by the cares of his position, a musician created for him a cat piano. The musician selected cats whose natural voices were at different pitches and arranged them in cages side by side so that when a key on the piano was depressed, a mechanism drove a sharp spike into the appropriate cat's tail. The result was a melody of meows that became more vigorous as the cats became more desperate. Who could help but laugh? at such music. Thus, the prince was raised from his melancholy. Yes, just as it is today, in the 17th century, people derived great pleasure from the misfortune of cats. So it seems, anyway. There's no actual evidence that any cat pianos were actually made, save for a few anecdotes here and there. However, the unique sadism of the cat piano has captured the imagination of many individuals in the past couple of centuries. Consider the case of Johann Christian Ryle, the 19th century physician who actually coined the term psychiatry. He advocated for the therapeutic use of the cat piano in treating patients who were schizophrenic and those in vegetative states. A fugue played on this instrument, when the ill person is so placed that he cannot miss the expression on their faces, must bring Lot's wife herself from the fixed state into conscious awareness. The study of musical instruments is called organology, where musical instruments are typically organized by how they produce sound. Stringed instruments are generally grouped together because they rely upon vibrating strings to produce sound. In the field of what we would call speculative organology, there are quite a few instruments that rely upon the shrieks of animals to produce sound. Take the pig piano, for example, allegedly first commissioned by Louis IX of France to produce music by pulling pig's tails, or the classic sketch of the mouse organ from Monty Python's Flying Circus. A human version of this concept appears in the movie The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Probably my personal favorite example of this in popular media is in the beautifully animated and narrated short film, The Cat Piano, which is on YouTube, and you should definitely check that out. A humane version of The Cat Piano was developed by Henry Dagg, who replaced the tortured screams of cats with cat squeaky toys. Because of the viral success of one of his videos, Henry and his cat piano were invited to perform Somewhere Over the Rainbow at a charity garden party for Prince Charles. And just like the 17th century prince before him, the Prince of Wales could not help but cry from laughter. After all, to quote scripture, that which has been is that which will be, and that which has been done is that which will be done. The desire to reappropriate the sounds of distressed animals is apparently an old one, but the question is, why? 
Is it because of the taboo novelty of mixing something as divine as music with something as debased as animal torture? Maybe, but when Kircher first wrote of the Katzenklavier, animals were imbued with very little moral agency. According to St. Augustine, by a most just ordinance of the Creator, both animals' life and their death are subject to our use, even if that use is, I guess, torturing cats to make princes laugh. There is certainly an element of what was once called delectatio morosa, or morose delectation, taking joy in sin. But is it even a sin? I mean, yes, it's a cruel and torturous device, but remember, cats are cruel and torturous. They are soulless killing machines that are a scourge on all that is good and godly. So, moral questions aside, is it even practical to make a cat piano? Yes, there is an app that you can download in the App Store, but I want to make my own. We would need a selection of cats who could meow on pitch, but what's more is we would need that pitch to remain consistent, so we could rely upon those cats to produce melodies. This seems kind of unlikely, but as somebody mentioned in a previous video of mine, apparently my cat meows at a C-sharp descending down to a B natural. Trials with my cat indicated that, yes, he's fairly consistent with that. Resisting the urge to go down to the animal shelter to start selecting cats based upon their meows, I loaded several examples of my cat's meow into a sampler so I could play it on a piano. I then routed the MIDI coming out of my keyboard to fire video clips of my cat meowing so I could get the full cat piano experience. Whether or not it's enough to treat 19th century schizophrenic patients, I'll leave that judgment up to you, but I do hope that you enjoy these selections from my cat piano. <laughs> Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. My name is Adam Neely. I have a new video coming out every Monday. If you enjoy what I do, please consider joining my Patreon because it's through my patrons over at Patreon that I'm able to do this every week. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, peace.